guys. Happy weekend. That's a dumb greeting. Cool. Start again. Hey guys. Um, how are you? What? Why am I the worst today? But really, how are you? This is this is not cute. This or this. I should shave. I really need a haircut. Like, look at that. Oh my god. Ugh. It's not been like my week physically. I've been having a lot of like ugly days. I mean, let's see. Probably for every day this week. And I was trying to be really positive about it. And I was like, you know what? You can own you. Like, you can be better if that's what you want. Like, if you want to be, say, I don't know, if you want to, like, have hair that isn't gross, you can. That can be it. So I was feeling good. And one day, it was on Tuesday, um, one of my classes was canceled. So I was sitting with some of my classmates that I'm friends with, and we were just hanging out. And... They were all like going to get some food, and I was like, I'll get some food too. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Subway. I'm gonna get something like that's relatively healthy and feel good about myself. So I walked out of the area we were sitting in, feeling like it was good. There was like, you know, a hop in my step. I was feeling good. And then who walks by me on either side, but like this stream of, of men that like dressed very well and wore clothes that like had like fit them and um looked good and like their hair it looked like they got their hair cut regularly you know and um yeah it's like they were glowing or something and then i went to a and w and got a teen burger combo and then cried so i'm gonna start getting like my hair cut when i need to not three weeks after that and i'm gonna um well, to say I'm going to exercise is a bit dangerous. I might think more about exercising. Like, that's that really is step one, and I need to start at step one. So today, um, again, I have nothing prepared. I'm the worst. And it's even, like, earlier. It's Friday now, not Sunday. Um, what I'm trying to show you by uploading my videos earlier and earlier is that I'm really um, spontaneous. And you can't ever... You got, you know, you can't ever, you'll never know what I'm going to do. I'm just like, so fun and like, so, you know, ooh, I did that and you didn't see it coming. So, I mean, you know, I'm always fun. So I think today I'm just going to do um, another book discussion thing because I didn't really plan anything and I'm, I don't want to bore you guys by doing like book haul after book haul after book haul. And I really need to stop like, resorting to that because it's encouraging me to buy more. Because I'm like, well, I have no video planned for this week. I should buy a whole lot of books to show people. That's dangerous for me. I really need to stop that. So, let's begin. So today I'm going to talk about Obasan by Joy Kagawa. Um, another Asian-Canadian novel. You all know how I like that. So while I'm talking about Obasan, I'll also be talking about this book here, which is called This Is My Own, Letters to Wes, and Other Writings of Japanese Canadians from 1941 to 1948, and it's by Miro Kitagawa. So Obasan, that's a flimsy whimsy. <sighs> Why do I say so many dumb things? Um, great. So Obasan is about the Japanese Canadian internment during World War II. Um, well, that's right in front of my face. <laughs> I'm a very good booktuber. I obviously know all the tricks. You know, like, cover up the face with your flimsy whimsy. I hate myself. So, um, Obasan, like I said, is about Japanese Canadian internment. And Japanese internment happened not only in Canada, but also in the States. And um, basically what happened is people of... Japanese descent, like Japanese Canadians, no matter where they were born, really, like even Japanese Canadians who were born in Canada were made to um, carry identification cards that noted their ancestry and their fingerprinted, and they were eventually forcibly moved from their homes um, into internment camps. All of their private possessions were taken from them, and they were made to leave the coast of British Columbia, which is where a lot of them settled. Um, it has a lot to do with 
with the industry, um, you know, fishing. That's what a lot of a lot of them did, and they had their boats taken from them. There's one photo that I I can't m remember who it's by or what it's called, but it's essentially just like this harbor filled with all of these Japanese fishing boats, like filled, um, because it was such a, a I don't know it was their industry, you know, it was um, how they survived, and it was also tied to their Japanese heritage because. Japan being an island country, um, you know, fish is a main source of food and fishing is a main source of income. So by uh, taking away all of their possessions, including their fishing boats, they're taking away the livelihood and the lives of these people. And they're also stripping away their identity as, as Japanese Canadian, but also emphasizing it and criminalizing it. Um, these people were sent against their will into internment camps, which they also had to pay for, um, with very poor living conditions. Um, they were made to like perform manual labor, and um, all all because of Japan's role in World War II. Um, so now that we've got context down for the um, setting of Obasan, I'll tell you a bit about <laughs> about. What it's about? It's about a Japanese Canadian woman named Naomi, who revisits her childhood and reconstructs it, Mem like remembering um, her life as a child, her mother's life, her grandmother's life. She's trying to reconstruct her past and fill in the gaps and understand what was going on. Um, it's a really beautiful novel. It's like it is a Canadian classic and um, certainly a Japanese Canadian classic. It's beautiful and if that's something that you're interested in, if you're interested in, in Japanese Canadian or Japanese American even because I mean it's not very different. Um, if you're interested in you know internment or or the similarities between this and and other internments that have happened in the past in history, I mean like Obviously, even during the time this is set in, there are concentration camps in Germany, and, and so there's a lot of parallels. If you're interested in anything like that, I would definitely recommend picking up this book. While Naomi is trying to revisit and reconstruct her childhood, there's a character, her aunt, um, her mother's sister, who plays the role of presenting her with like the facts, with like the historical record. And something that's very interesting that Joy Kagawa did and this is why I'm bringing up This Is My Own by Mila Kitagawa, is that she did use actual pieces of the historical record in her book. Um, that is to say that she copied word for word some letters written by Mila Kitagawa while she was experiencing the internment firsthand. There's an entire chapter which is essentially like she's copying out these letters changing the names inside them to match the novel. You know, she's putting her character's names where people in Kitagawa's life would have been. But otherwise, everything is word for word. And so, like, what's the point of this? What good does that do? Like, this is a novel. Why why would you add things like that? Um, ooh, glare, glare. Taking that away. Neat. Okay, just... Really... Damn. A lot of the time, I feel like fact and fiction are held at opposite ends. Obviously, because fiction is false and fact is not. But there's a that old adage that nothing is as true as fiction. Fiction is something that, you know, nothing helps you empathize with somebody else or with a group of people than fiction does. Fiction allows you to get inside that life. You can read as many quotes um, or statistics or studies or articles um, about something, but you're always kept at a distance from that. It's always very academic or it's always very cold. It isn't the same as fiction, where fiction brings you into the mind or the heart of the person or the family or the group of people. Um, but what Kugawa does by introducing these 
letters um, from, you know, sourced in actual history into her fictionalized um, account of this is that she brings fiction and fact together. She says, like, yes, this is a story, but this is a true story. Like, this is a story that didn't happen but could have happened. And, you know, these these letters are real. Here's the rest of the story. Um, and that's so important. It's very important to to kind of hold history accountable um, and fill, use fiction to fill in the gaps that maybe history left behind. Because history is always censored, too. You know, you only hear what the people in charge want you to hear. Fiction lets you reimagine what what else could be there but isn't. You know? Because like the historical record is like an official it's a, an official history and so um, it can be heavily edited and and censored and even if we think you know we're getting the whole truth there are always truths that don't make it into our realm of knowledge and then there are also personal truths and personal personal stories personal histories that get lost completely you know and that's why these letters are so important because like personal correspondence and personal account of these events um, make all the difference especially in in this novel where it's like a slap in the face saying like this really this really happened people lived this way it wasn't that long ago so I guess this was just a short talk I mean, it wasn't long, and it wasn't very well planned out. I struggled a lot trying to get my thoughts out. I'm sure you saw that. Um, but if you're interested at all in in narratives like this, um, I definitely suggest reading Obasan by Joe Kagawa. And if you are interested in the, in the historical aspects of it, then definitely check out um, Miro Kagawa's letters. There's, there, I mean, there are a lot that haven't been used, like a majority. She used maybe six or seven in the novel um, but there are like there's a whole volume of writings by people who experience the internment firsthand and um, if you're interested in going further and checking out more Canadian fiction about this um, Francis Tani's newest novel Requiem is is about about the Japanese Canadian experience during World War II her husband is Japanese Canadian, and so, from my understanding, they took um, a road trip into the interior of British Columbia, where a lot of these internment camps were, and still, like you can still see where they were now. Um, so they took a trip, and I guess that is what inspired her to write this novel. So there's a lot for you guys to check out if you're interested, and I hope you are because it's um, important history to know. You know, let me know if it's something you're interested in. Let me know if you have read it before or have read Requiem or have heard of Obasan. I'm sure a lot of you have read it. Um, well, Canadians, that is, because I think it's pretty com like widely read in Canada. Um, yeah, so sorry that this was so poorly planned and sorry that I struggled a lot, but I just wanted to do a little talk about a book I loved. Um, so hope it went well. Next time I promise it'll be more planned. Okay, great. So thanks guys. Um, the reason I'm uploading early is because I've got so much to do. So much to do this weekend. I have no time for tomfoolery or YouTube. So that's sad. So I'm uploading this early and then I'm not going to see you guys again for a while. Um, I will get a haircut. I will iron my shirts from now on. Um, and I think I'll keep reading books. I guess. It's kind of alright. So, yeah. Um, well, that's that. Have a good one, guys. See you soon.